Hello, everybody, and welcome. I'm glad you can join us as we pray the Catholic Mass this weekend. Um, we are celebrating the seventh Sunday in Ordinary Time, and this is the last Sunday in Ordinary Time before we begin Lent, and then uh, we won't join these Sundays in Ordinary Time until uh, all the way after, uh, after Pentecost and uh, after, um, after Corpus Christi. So let's begin this celebration. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and with your spirit. And now, my brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you have shown us the way to the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you have given us the consolation of the truth. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the good shepherd, leading us into everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. And glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. And let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that always pondering spiritual things, we may carry out, both in word and deed, that which is pleasing to you. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Leviticus. The Lord said to Moses, Speak to, your, to the whole Israelite community and tell them, Be holy, for I, the Lord your God, am holy. You shall not bear hatred for your brother or sister in your heart. Though you may have to reprove your fellow citizen, do not incur sin because of him. Take no revenge and cherish no grudge against any of your people. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. I am the Lord, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The response is, the Lord is kind and merciful. The Lord is kind and merciful. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all my being, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. The Lord, the Lord is, is kind and, and merciful. merciful. He pardons all your inequities, heals all your ills. He redeems your life from destruction, crowns you with, your, with kindness and compassion. The Lord, the Lord is, is kind, kind and, and merciful. merciful. Merciful and gracious is the Lord, slow to anger and abounding in kindness. Not according to our sins does he heal with us, nor does he requite us according to our crimes. The Lord, the Lord is, is kind and, and merciful. merciful. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he put our transgressions from us. As a father has compassion on his children, so the Lord has compassion on those who fear him. The Lord, the Lord is, is kind and, and merciful. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, do you not know that you are the temple of God and that the Spirit of God dwells in you? If anyone destroys God's temple, 
God will destroy that person. For the temple of God, which you are, is holy. Let no one deceive himself. If anyone among you considers himself wise in this age, let him become a fool so as to become wise. For the wisdom of this world is foolish in the eyes of God. For it is written, God catches the wise in their own ruses. And again, the Lord knows the thoughts of the wise, that they are vain. So let no one boast about human beings, for everything belongs to you. Paul or Apollos or Cephas or the world of life or death or the present or the future all belong to you and to you to Christ and Christ the God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. You have heard that it was said, an eye for an eye, and a tooth for a tooth. But I say to you, offer no resistance to one who is evil. When someone strikes you on your right cheek, turn and offer the other one as well. If anyone wants to go to law with you over your tunic, hand over your cloak as well. Should anyone press you into service for one mile, go for two miles. Give to the one who asks of you, and do not turn your back on the one who wants to borrow. You have heard that it was said, you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, pray to love your enemies, pray for those who persecute you, that you may be children of your heavenly Father. For he makes his son rise on the bad and the good and causes rain to fall on the just and the unjust. For if you love those who love you, what recompense will you have? Do not tax collectors do the same? And if you greet your brothers only, what is unusual about that? Do not pagans do the same? So be perfect, just as your heavenly Father is perfect. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Well, this uh, past week on Tuesday, we had uh, Valentine's Day. And in, uh, in many schools, that means the time-honored tradition of the candy gram was in play. And um, in my friend's school, um, uh, St. Charles, they had uh, candy grams that they were selling and the eighth grade uh, student council was running it and it was 50 cents for a candy gram or three for a dollar. And with a candy gram, you get a message to and from and stapled to it is a lollipop. And uh, so they were doing a brisk business in candy grams. And uh, one of the boys, a third grader, um, his mother gave him $20 that day to go and buy candy grams. And so he plunked down his $20, he got 60 candy grams, and he made them all out to himself. So, and ironically, his name was Christian. So every one of the candy grams says, to Christian, from Christian. And the eighth graders were, of course, outraged uh, because clearly Christian did not understand uh, what, the, what candy grams were about and what Valentine's Day was about. And they thought he was really selfish. I suspect he was just in it for the lollipops. But in either case, maybe, uh, maybe Christian needs to grow a little bit in becoming Christian when it comes to candy grams. And he's going to find it difficult, just like we all find it difficult when we understand what it means to be a Christian. And, and we see that in, in our readings today. 
These are among the really hard teachings that Jesus gives us in the Sermon on the Mount. Um, and he says, you know, uh, turn, your, turn one cheek to the other. Go the extra mile. Um, love your, your enemies. Be perfect as your heavenly Father is perfect. And it's like, who can do this? Who can do that? Um, for every one of us, we would find this extremely difficult. And yet, I have uh, great hope for the little third grade Christian that he will one day really understand what it means to be a Christian because he is surrounded by a community of love. He is surrounded by a family. He belongs to a parish and a school that will show him what it means to really be a Christian. And I also have great hope for us Christians when we struggle with the really hard teachings. Because, yeah, it's true on our own. We may not be able to love our enemies very easily. We sure can't be perfect as the Heavenly Father is perfect. But what gives me hope is this, that we have a Lord Jesus Christ who became one of us, who does know what it is like to be perfect as his heavenly father is perfect, who did love his enemies. In fact, he forgave them from the cross, who did turn the other cheek when he was struck, who did hand over his tunic and his cloak on the cross, who did walk not only the second mile, but if you think about it on Easter Sunday with those two on the road to Emmaus, he walked seven miles. And that Lord and his spirit lives within us. And so what seems to be completely impossible and is still really difficult is possible for us who are Christian because of the Christ that is within us. So maybe we do need to take stock this week and say, all right, who do I need to forgive? Who do I need to pray for? who maybe has persecuted me or, or, or sinned against me? Who do I need to, to, to give an extra mile to in my life to go the little bit extra for them? And what do I need to do? What do I need to get rid of in order that I can be closer to the Christ that is within me and closer to being perfect as the Heavenly Father is perfect? I have great hope for our little Christian, once he finishes his 60 lollipops, that he will get it. And I have great hope for each one of us Christians too, because of the Christ who is within us. And now let us profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And now let us present these petitions 
for ourselves and for all people in the world today. We pray for our church and our parish community that the Spirit of God may dwell within our common life of prayer and works of charity. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who fight against racism, oppression, and social injustice, that their courageous witness may inspire us all to work for justice and peace within the bounds of Christian love, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for those for whom, from whom we are separated or alienated, for those who have forgot, we have forgotten or ignored, that for those that we need to forgive, that God will grant us the grace to take the first step toward reconciliation with them. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for those who have died in the peace of Christ. We especially pray for those who are close to all of us who are uh, celebrating and praying this Mass together. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And finally, we pause to add our own prayers and intentions. And as you know, I always add uh, to my own prayers whatever you put in the comment section. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord God, Father of us all, hear the prayers we make to you for every member of the human family. Open our hearts to your spirit that we may seek an end to bitterness and discord, following the light and love of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. And pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. As we celebrate your mysteries, O Lord, with the observance that is your due, we humbly ask you, that what we offer to honor your majesty may profit us for salvation through Christ our Lord. Amen. And the Lord be with you, with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for in you we live and move and have our being. And while in this body we not only experience the daily effects of your care, but even now possess the pledge of life eternal. For having received the first fruits of the Spirit, through whom you raised up Jesus from the dead, we hope for an everlasting share in the Paschal Mystery. And so with all the angels we praise you, as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. 
You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Nelson, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. And now, at the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin, and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always, with your spirit. And now let us offer each other the sign of peace. Peace.
Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Now is the time for the reception of Holy Communion. And um, this I know is very difficult for Catholics who are unable to to receive our Lord sacramentally, body, blood, soul, and divinity, because, you know, nothing replaces being able to come to Mass yourself. So this is then when we make that prayer of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Lord, I have come to believe that you are the Christ, the Son of the living God, who is coming into the world. Amen. And let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that we may experience the effects of the salvation which is pledged to us by these sacred mysteries through Christ our Lord. Amen. And the Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Thanks so much for praying this Mass with us, and um, uh, be, please be assured of my prayers as we enter into the season of Lent. Wednesday is, is Ash Wednesday. Uh, as you probably know, that's a day of fasting and abstinence, and uh, the rules for fast and abstinence uh, you can always find easily on the, um, the uh, USCCB, the Bishop's Conference website. Um, but also remember, I know a lot of people that, that pray this Mass with us online um, for them, they have, you know, medical conditions that if you have to take medicine, if you have to uh, eat food at regular intervals, uh, nursing mothers, all of these things, the, um, the, the fasting is, 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 is not to, to replace that. That's what we need to do. And, and the real fasting is, is in our heart. So if you can't do the fast and abstinence, um, then, you know, find something in your heart, even if it's prayer. And I think that's well-pleasing, well-satisfying to our Lord. Anyway, we'll see you again next week.